Okay, now we're recording. Okay, so we're gonna tonight we're gonna do chapter 16 and we're also gonna do chapter 24. Who did I lose? Um okay, the seven one six number. Yes, uh, so we're gonna do those two chapters. Okay, the, the 16, 20, and the reason why I'm doing that because they I believe they're your hardest two chapters, and I want to make sure I get your good start on with them. But the chapters in the middle is what you're gonna read. So you're gonna be reading from chapter 17 to 23. That'll be your reading for this week. Um, there's not, uh, the only thing I need you to do is read it. I'm not going to um, give, ask you for a summary. The only thing I need you to do is that anything you don't comprehend, understand to give me a call, okay? That's it. So you're reading actually from so we're going to do chapters, uh, excuse me for a minute. We're going to do chapter, we're going to start off, you're going to be doing the Christology. Yeah, you're going to read from chapter uh, 17, which is 115, and you're going to go all the way to 140, let me see, chapter 23. Chapter 23 is 45, so you're going to read the allegorical principle. Okay, so that's, um, well, I know it's less than 30 some pages probably. So it's just 30 some pages for one week. So that's not bad because you don't have no written assignment. So all you have to, the responsibility is reading. But this is your major responsibility here. And I'm recording this. What you don't know, you have responsibility to call me and say, Dr. Shore, I'm, I'm struggling with understanding this. Okay. Now, because when the test comes and you don't ask and you fail, a question or so because you didn't ask, then that's not gonna be on me. I'm 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 telling you now all this week I'm shutting like everybody else. So I will be here. I'm not going out of the country, I'm not going out of town, I'm hardly going out of my house. Okay, mm -hmm. so read over this. What you don't understand, call me. But what we are going to do, we are gonna go over the breach principle. This is one of the harder ones, okay. And we're going to go over um, interpretation of prophecy tonight. We're going to go over those two. Everything <clears throat> else in the middle, you will be responsible for reading that. Okay? Now, um, I am going to send everybody the recording once we're done, and we are recording at this time. Okay, so let's go to the breach principle, 103. <clears throat> And while you're doing it, one reason why I, I'm, I'm, I want you to read those other on your own, because some of them are real simplistic. The Christocentric principle. principle. I mean, Christ being the center. Symbolic. Um, that, that's not hard at all. Much of it, parables, understanding parables, most, especially most of your pastors and leaders and teachers, talking about parables, symbols. Uh, most of you that done Bible 1, uh, it, the chapter 21 talks about uh, the typical principle of talking about typology. Well, you had types in Bible 1 advanced, and most of you had that. There are uh, maybe just one or two of you that haven't had that yet, so the Cheryl hasn't. But most of you had Bible 1, and you, you understand types. A type is a person, place, a thing in the Old Testament that represents a person, place, a thing in the New Testament. So that's why I'm having you read it on your own, because a lot of the stuff you had uh, in other books, are, are I'm expecting you to know it as a pastor. And if you don't, don't worry about it. That's why you can give me a call and I'll be more than happy to go over it. Um, okay, looking at chapter 16, the breach principle. It says the principle by which the interpretation of a certain verse or passage of scripture is aided by consideration of certain breaches of promise and time. Okay, now here is a principle that, um, that many times we don't consider uh, and probably never really heard of, but it's a principle that uh, we need to be able to uh, understand it and apply if necessary. So the definition is only saying, only apply this uh, principle if it's necessary, okay? Now, and the principle has to deal with promises uh, and time. The Bible talks about various promises, promises um, were made between God and man, God and, and nations. Uh, and so there are many uh, breaches uh, 
down. Let me let me let me before I get ahead of myself. Let's look at what it says. The amplification. It says since the, the principle uh, will be a, a a new one to many interpreters, a large amount of space will be given to development. It says the definition of breach, according to a dictionary, is a breach is a state of being broken, ruptured, break, or a gap. Okay, or a gap, a a, a hole or opening. And a wall, a fence, uh, goes on a breach as also an inter interruption, uh, a, a blank space, a breaking, or interruption and in relationship. So, um, I'm going to ask this question. So now you look at the uh, the breach principle. When did the first breach take place? First. First breach, you mean a broken promise? Uh, uh, or, well, don't necessarily have to be a, a promise, but well, a, one, a break in a relationship. Uh, well, one took place with the children of Israel at that river with the, the 12 spies. Mm -hmm. going okay. To okay, explain further, uh, uh, Pastor John. Well, he, uh, he promised them the land. Uh -huh. They they went over to spy out the land and came back and they reneged on the part that they were supposed to do to go in and possess the land because they saw something that God didn't see. Giants, so whatever. Okay. So they they breached they breached the promise by so doing that. So it caused a time lapse for them possessing the land. Amen. Okay. Uh, uh, Apostle Shannon, you get ready to say something. Yeah, uh, I was thinking about the Garden of Eden. Eden. Okay. Could that be a, a, a possibility? Because, um, you know, um, they breached it when they, I would say, when they uh, uh, ate from the tree of uh, good and evil knowledge. Okay. Yes, that, that, that's, that's actually pretty much your first breach. Um, okay. Anyone else? Does anyone else think of a breach? Uh, what about the flood, dog, uh, when God, you know, destroyed the people and, and the flood came and, and destroyed everybody? Okay, but how how was that how is that a breach? Because there was there was a gap there because everybody God destroyed everybody but Noah and his family. So that, okay, that was, okay. That was a okay. Gap. Very good. That that was a breach. That wasn't something that God wanted to do, but because of the evenness of their heart, evenness of man. And that was a breach, and he destroyed. Okay, the, uh, a certain generation. Okay, so I think everybody understands the breach. So that wasn't that hard either, right? So now, what you have to do, though, now this is what you want to do tonight. This is tonight's homework. Okay, I want you to read about the breach of promise. No, uh, okay, on page one hundred five, the uh, a, a breach of a promise con uh, concerning land. There, uh, let me see. I think that is, yeah, I don't, you don't really have to go no further than 106. Tonight, you don't have to go no further than 106. That's it. I don't want you to get into uh, these timetables right now. We'll, we'll get that in another course. Do not worry about these other courses. I mean, this, this, uh, these timetables here. Do not, do not even let that get in your head, okay? Now, um, so does anyone else have any question concerning the breach? There are, um, again, many breaches. Now, more than likely on your test, there are some breaches that, uh, that has already been mentioned here, but there will be other breaches that uh, may be on the test. You have to let me know whether more than likely is this a breach or, or is this something else? It's, you might say, sir, this is not a breach at all. There, there, there was nothing about it. There was nothing broken. There was nothing stopped. Um, and so, but again, remember what a breach is, okay? Uh, again, it can be an interruption of time. It don't necessarily be something uh, uh, between a man, but, uh, but God, for some reason, God halted time for some reason. Okay, now I want us to go to the very end of your book, end of, uh, Interpretation of Prophecy. Interpretation of prophecy.
Like I said, 149. It says Webster's Dictionary defines prophecy as prediction of the future under the influence of divine guidance. Acts are pre act uh, practice of a prophet, uh, something predicted. Now, what's important here is the fact that it says that um, it's an influence of divine guidance. Every prophet is not operating under divine guidance. There are people that have the ability to prognosticate, also prophesy, if you want to call that. And, and what, the, what many of them say can come to pass. But you have to determine whether that is uh, uh, operating under the spirit of uh, uh, divinity of God or this witchcraft or something under Satan. Um, so um, again, so prophecy is not determined by whether something comes to pass or not, because there are many root workers, witches and various different things, warlocks that can prophesy things and it come to pass. Deuteronomy is breaking down even further. Just because something come to pass is not the total uh, definition, but, but okay. So um, it mentions here multiple scriptures in verse, uh, from starting um, on the first page, 149, it give you multiple scriptures, but I want to turn over to number two, the nature of prophecy. Now, this is something that I've been teaching for years uh, about prophecy. Now, it says the nature of prophecy, number two, prophecy as foretelling, foretelling, the form of prophecy that is in the realm of preaching. The prophet speaks for God, uh, for the people communication, communicating the mind of, uh, of God for the present. Often the past will be used to deal with the present. This will include such things as exhortation, reproof, warning, edification, and comfort. Now, so this is forth telling. So again, you, you, you have to know this. This is a must know that, okay, prophecy is, is foretelling and it comes more likely in the stage of preaching. So if you are preaching, you are prophesying. Anytime you are preaching God's word under anointing, you are prophesying. Now, what is, can someone give me a scripture to back up what I'm saying is so? Hmm. Can anyone think of a scripture that he that prophesied? Well, I'm, only thing I can think about is in Corinthians where Paul was talking about seek uh that you ought to seek the gift for prophecy rather than the rest because it is the greatest of them okay okay uh you're right in that part there the scripture says that he that prophesies prophesies to edify right. and to exhort okay right. so therefore that's what preachers do when you're preaching more than likely you're edifying you're comforting or you're uh, you're exhorting and or you're reproving just what the book says here. So again, but many times people do not see preachers as prophets. So now pastor, you pass this on here. I wanna say this. You are the master prophet of your house. You are the head angel of your house. Many times people say, well, we don't have a prophet in our church. Oh, y'all don't have a pastor? That pastor is the prophet. And many times, Again, but you've got pastors that don't know that they are the uh, prophet. You're the main prophet. All other prophets that God send come subject unto you, the main prophet. You are you are walking in the office of a prophet because you are the pastor. Hmm. Question. Yes. Uh, the word prophet doesn't preaching and prophet come under the same umbrella. Does, does preacher and prophet? <laughs> yes. Preaching and prophet doesn't it come under the same umbrella? Yes, I think that I think they have the same Greek word. I'm not sure if it brings it out in here. I think in prior uh, uh, my studies, it, it may bring it out here. They share the same. Uh, they share the same word. Um, but but again, this is for, the reason why I'm bringing this out and stressing this because most people look at prophecy as foretelling b look at foretelling and i'm gonna come back to what you were talking about uh, uh pastor in a second prophecy as foretelling 
This aspect of prophecy is in the form of prediction. The prophet speaks for God, communicating his mind for the future. Often both the past and the present will be used to deal with the future. Many times the purpose of the prophetic prediction is to produce uh, and present godliness, okay? So again, so there's two types of prophecy. There are foretelling and there's foretelling. Um, and so therefore, so therefore when a person is preaching God's word, you are prophesying. If God is using you to predict something, see something in the future, that's prophesying. So that's prophecy that deals with the present and that's prophecy that deals with the future. So we can I clearly say then that prophecy as past, present, and future. So, but preaching is, now, I will say this and get this clear. Every pastor is a prophet, but not every prophet is a pastor. That's the clear thing. Every yeah. preacher is a prophet, but not every prophet is, not every prophet is a pastor. Okay, see that. So, you would be fair to say that we do not longer hold the office of a prophet in foretelling. That we, when you say we, are you talking about pastors? Yes, sir. Do they hold the office in foretelling? I, I said we do not hold the office of a prophet in foretelling. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, that's that's not our main job. To no, no, foretell. no. Yes. No, no, it's not. Uh, uh, future uh, predicting the future is not the main job. And actually, I'm glad you brought that up because actually, when you look at what Paul said, Paul did not mention uh, prophets as pr being predicted. He mentioned prophet as foretelling. F O R T H. He mentioned edifying, comfort, or exhorting. He didn't even get into that that the other stuff about predicting the future. And and that's the danger of prophecy. I, I, I'll say this, I wouldn't give a hill of beans for a person that that all he can do is predict the future, but he don't have a word, a present word for the house. A, a true prophet, a man of God, need to have a present word, because what, what good is the future word going to do you if, if you can't really uh, deal with the present? I mean, I could be wrong. This is why we're talking about this. Okay. Other pastors down here. Anyone else? What's what's your thought? Um, well, my thought is 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 like you're saying. Uh, uh, we are we are uh, we are bringing a word to the house, and we do um, talk about the future things that we believe that God is going to do. We always say that, you know. God is, if God is blessing us in the present, he will bless us in the future. And could it be also because uh, you're saying that we are prophet is because we are uttering words, we're speaking words? Could well, not just uttering words, we're uttering the words of God. Well, I mean, um, yeah, yeah. Prophet, you're giving a message uh, straight from God. And we're going to be getting into that probably our next course in, in homiletics is mm -hmm. that when we as pastors stand before, stand in front of that pulpit, we need to be speaking not in our behalf, but in behalf of God. That's what makes it uh, uh, prophetic when you're speaking in the behalf of someone else. And but many times we as pastors we get caught up, we writing our sermon out, and and, and uh, we haven't besought at God, and, and we're sticking on what's what works good for us and what sounds good. But we really have to focus on opening our mouth and allowing God to speak, even though it's present tense. We still want to be able, and, and again, I love um, sermon writing, um, but I believe that we need a connection with God, that when we're preaching God's word, that what's on that paper is only is second to what to the inspiration that God pour in your belly. When I say inspiration, that God is speaking, when you're behind that pulpit, that God is speaking directly to you. And what he said to you may not necessarily line up on that paper at that time. You have to have a connection that you, if God is pulling on you, you're going to have a, a, a trust God because now he's giving you something that's not on your paper because on your paper, you got A, B, C, D. You got things lined out. 
but that God can take you a different way and take you off that paper. So now you're going to have to trust your fellowship, your relationship with God, that what he's saying to you, that he's not going to have you sounding crazy out there in left field and leaving you lost. That's trusting God. And we're going to get into that again. That, that'll be next month sometime for some of you in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Dr. Short, uh, um, I have a habit of making God my audience. You know, I always see him like he's the biggest audience than the people. You know, I'm speaking to the people, but I always say to myself, well, God is my audience because he's watching me, you know. So I kind of look at it that way. I don't know if people do. Um, okay, we're talking uh, about preaching and, and prophecy. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyone else, how does... Your preaching, does your preaching feel like prophecy to you? Well, I, um, yeah, I, I, I think it, it almost have to it be kind of like Noah. He preached 120 years. He also was preaching about the present and he talked about the past and he all, he was also preaching about the future. Okay, my dog, my dogs are acting crazy. I apologize for that. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> okay. He's just, make, he just making sure you stay focused. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Uh, yeah, my son just walked in. Uh, okay, uh, but Pastor, uh, 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 say that one more time for us, please. Uh, uh, I was talking about Noah. I said, Noah, when he preached, he preached 120 years. He also preached about the past, the present, and he also was preaching about the future. Amen. Amen. And so that's what we said. The definition of prophecy is past, present, and future. Um, so anyone else want to speak concerning prophecy? How do you, when you're preaching, do you feel as though the spirit of God is taking over? Uh, that your that your preaching feels more like prophecy. Have you had those type of moments? Like someone like to speak to that experience? Um, yes, many times. You know, uh, it seems like you um, you just begin to say things, and you'd be like, "Wow!" You know, and it's, you do begin to. It's, it'd be something that it's not on. You don't even have it in your script. You know, and it's just something that start coming up out of you. You know, uh, I've had, I've had that kind of experience. You know, Amen. you know something that I wasn't even it wasn't even had in to talk about, and I just go there and begin to talk about it and prophesy about it, what what God is doing. You know, and what He's getting ready to do. Well, you, you know, know it. And um, but I've had that experience. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Okay, uh, Young, you very say something, Pastor Young. You know it's real when you have spent all week to prepare a sermon, and between the door and the pulpit, somehow or another, your mind is completely uh, gone off on something else other than the sermon that you have prepared. So you cannot. Uh, use the sermon that you have prepared you go in a total god brings scripture back to you that you, know, you had long forgotten about and you preach a sermon on something totally different that you weren't even thinking about my lord my lord mm -hmm. um dr shaw yes yeah, sir in class that the people that you're talking to will admit at some point in time that the word that they received either spoke from something that happened to them in the past or they'll come back later and say you know what you were talking about on the other day it happened you know so you feel it in your own spirit as you're dealing with it uh dealing with your people when you're preaching to them but if and you can recognize in their faces that you said something that uh that, that, that it, hit, it hit a spot in their in their mind that may make a difference in their life. My you Lord. Know? Amen. Uh, I don't know if there's any greater feeling when you're preaching 
that you can see the people of God just eating it like, you know, like yeah. they get that, you know, and, and they're, especially that they're crying and carrying on. And you, man, it makes you, as, and I, I know for, for myself, it's been some years since I pastor, but I remember people walk in the door, I almost want to start my sermon all over again. <laughs> like, y'all <I'm done. laughs> <I'm done. laughs> You know, so, uh, but in a way, uh, now I want to, I want to shift this just a little teeny bit. I have Sunday school teachers on here. Okay, we have a couple of Sunday school teachers on here. Now, uh, Sunday school teachers, let me ask you this, and pastors, you can come in behind them because most of you pastors, I'm quite sure you taught Sunday school at some time or another, okay? Now, as a Sunday school teacher, I've been a Sunday school teacher, but have you ever been teaching a Sunday school lesson and you feel like that God is giving you more than what's in the book or more that's on your paper? Have you felt like uh, in your duties and as, as a Sunday school teacher that God is giving, inspiring you to say something, uh, adding to what's uh, uh, adding to the lesson. Sunday school teachers. I, I would like to say, uh, you know, I teach Sunday school too, and y'all referring to you. I, I, I've had experiences where it almost turned into a church service uh, before church actually started. You know, because people got so involved. <laughs> You know, we were bringing out different points in the lesson, and, and people just just started. You know, it, it just the Holy Spirit just came into the Sunday school class, and it was almost as if we were getting ready to ha have a preaching going on in in the Sunday school class. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? I would say, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Okay. I would say that when you study a particular lesson, most times. Um, Something in your past will, or it could be even future, will um, give you an example to give to the people while you're teaching. Amen. So it brings out the um, particular lesson, um, bring it home, you know, in the present. So it's not just necessarily what happened in the Bible, but something present in your life right now that resembles what you're um, learning on that particular day. Wow. Awesome. 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 Okay. Anyone else? Any other uh, Sunday school teachers? Okay. Any pastors that taught or do teach? Because pastors do teach Sunday school. I did it for many years. Have you yeah. taught? Sunday, okay. school. Sunday school is an exciting time. Okay. When, and sometimes it can get real boring and you seem like you get completely <laughs> off the track. But I've seen times in Sunday school where people actually accept Christ uh, because of the lesson. And so I didn't know that. Wow. Wow. Amen. 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 So prophecy, uh, there's no limitation in prophecy. God can use you whether you're teaching a Sunday school class, preaching a word, dancing, singing, um, all this could be added into prophecy now. So, what we want you to mainly, uh, again, get out of this is that you've got two types of prophecy. And so you might want to highlight that. You got foretelling and you have foretelling. Understand the difference. So here you, you have to understand the difference. Okay. Now, prophecy uh, can come from multiple places. Um, prophecy can come from the devil. It can come from man. And it can come from God. Those are the three major places it can come from. Now, this is not in your book. This is coming from me. Prophecy can come from the devil. It can come from man. Self. Or it can come from God. Those are your three major places it come from. Now, let's talk about, um, let's go down to where it says uh, C, but we're going to go there. It says the spirit of prophecy, but well, I guess I'll read this, but I really want to get down to two. It says, this is a defined Revelations uh, 19.10. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy is the Holy Spirit ability to come upon men and cause them to speak forth inspired, inspired utterances. Okay, the spirit of prophecy was evident in uh, the godly line from Adam to Moses. It mentioned different people here that, uh, that um, were used. But now let's go down to the gift of prophecy. Um, so this is mentioned in 1 Corinthians uh, 12, 10 as one of the gifts of the spirit. It can be defined as God given ability to speak forth 
supernaturally as a spirit gives utterance. It is seen as being an operation of the spirit in the New Testament church, uh, which must be uh, exercised within divine guidance. And uh, we're going, now it does mention here, Philip had four daughters are a possible example of the gift. Why does it say that Philip four daughters are a possible example of the gift? The scripture states that they were prophecies. They prophesied. prophesied. Right. Just said they prophesied. That's all. That's all we get. It. They prophesied. So that's why it says possible. Now, so um, let's go into number three. The office of a prophet. Oh my gracious! This is okay. The office of a prophet. Here's where a lot of people get um, kind of mixed up but it's a it stated that god spoke to his people by the ministry of the prophet a pro a prophet was a person who was given the distinctive ministry of representing god before man he did so by moving under the prophetic mantle that came upon him the prophet was god's mouthpiece or spoken through uh which the holy uh, excuse me which the word of god flowed whether before telling that's preaching are predicting foretelling okay there are many men and uh men of god throughout the scriptures who held this office again so here the definition of an office is that when a person has a calling to do both so as i said earlier every pastor is not a prophet if that prophet is not a pastor he's carrying a gift but he's not carrying the office Say that again. If, okay. <laughs> if, if a, a, a pastor, if a prophet is um, not a, a prophet, if he is or he or she is um, not carrying both. Now, what it says here, it says whether foretelling or if they're working in one or the other, they. But the thing about it is, the office of the prophet has the ability to minister in either one at any time or both at the same time but a but now that's the office but the gift of prophecy number two the gift is a person that doesn't necessarily walk in the office this person can prophesy but more than likely their their prophecy is more likely foretelling and not foretelling they're not preaching they're just standing up and and being predicted and, and and they and and there are many people that have that gift, but everybody that have that gift can't preach. Okay, got you. Right. Okay, but that's not so their that, calling. That's, that's so one different. has a calling, so the office has a calling with it. The other one has a gift. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Question, comment, or statement? So, Dr. Short. So, uh, when we look at the um, fivefold ministry. So um, you know, talking about apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, you're saying that uh, the the prophet part is the person that has the ability to 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 do both. The office, the office. I mean, yeah. office. Yeah. yeah, office of a prophet. They're doing both. More than likely, uh, they're getting double on because they are a pastor and prophet. Mm -hmm. And and today. Uh, if you're not operating as a prophet, and I'm the same, not say prophet, I'm not talking about you guys every as something you gotta prophesy, foretell. But I say people get you caught up. And if you get caught up in the foretelling, being predictive, you're walking on an edge, a fine line of witchcraft. I mean, you gotta be really careful that people don't start uh uh recognizing you uh like you some uh palm reader by coming up to you by saying something like this pastor do you have a word for me today pastor has god told you anything about me today or for me today see you don't want to you don't want your your members need to recognize that what you have is a gift it's not something that you turn on and off like a faucet it's not it's it, this thing doesn't come from you it comes from god so i usually tell my people look if god gave me something to tell you adam and told you already you know so, so don't don't do that don't, don't don't put me in a position where god gonna smack me down and and things of this nature. So, um, so the prophet, the prophet has a gift, but more than likely, if they're not preaching, 
they're not walking in the office, they're walking in the gift. So there is a difference between the gift of prophecy and the office of a prophet. Now, um, okay, I'm gonna, let's go over to page 151. It mentions here, it says, in all these various periods of Israel's history in the Old Testament, there were there were no greater or grander ministry than that of the prophet. The prophets were noble, holy men of God. They were the representative of God to Israel, declaring his word, his mind, and his will to the nations at times in prosperity and adversity. These prophecies were known under the following destin, uh, uh, de designation. The men of God is what they were called, the seer, interpreters, messengers of the Lord, servants, prophets so the, the various titles that came along with uh these men now there are some prophets that um just, just speak concerning last day they are just what we call a last day prophecy prophet that's all that pretty much what god deal with them and you'll find there are various prophets that deal in specific areas that there are some that deal just congregationally but god gives them uh for, uh, predominantly just for the church. They don't deal with much future stuff. What God gives them is inside the house and not so much outside. So um, now, but we also know that there is, if you go to page uh, 153, there are, um, there are uh, written prophecies, but I'm going to go back to school, 152, excuse me, I skipped the page. It says prophets in relationship to king. And what way was David a prophet? He was, so we know he was the king, but in what way was David a prophet? He had, he had a lot of prophetic things to say concerning Christ. Yes, David had a lot to say in his writings concerning uh, Christ and even much uh, of his death and his resurrection, uh, mm -hmm. mainly his suffering. Uh, he, he talked a lot about that. He had, he talked as though he experienced the uh, the the the, uh, the pain of Christ in his writings. So yeah. David was a king that under that God used under the prophetic. So so we got go down to the bottom of page one fifty two. You got non writing prophets and you got writing prophets. Every prophet does not necessarily minister the same way. Okay, so. But this is a huge chapter. Um, I'm not going to go into to, to the rest of this because the rest of this, when it gets into um, a lot of these principles again, we will catch this in another course. So now going back over your homework assignment, you're going to um, let me get, catch myself. Start from chapter seven, uh, 17, 115. And you're going to go all the way to chapter 23. Now, tonight, uh, we done better part of an hour. But if you want to read out the rest of the prophetic, but the things that concern me that will be on the test, we talked about. We've been talked about. It. There's nothing else in the prophetic that you can read that's going to be on the test that we haven't already discovered. I need you to understand the office of a prophet, the prophetic gift, foretelling, and forthtelling. I need you to know the difference between those three, four things. Need to know the definition of a prophet. Either prophesy, prophesy to edify, comfort, and exhort. That's when it comes to prophecy. Because again, we got other courses that you'll be taking that will cover even more in the prophetic. Understanding uh, the anointing, we'll talk about it somewhat, uh, and some other courses that we that you uh, will be taking. Okay, is there any last questions, comments, or statements? Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're going to send everyone this recording so you can listen through. Okay, but if I were you, if you got time tonight, um, again, look over the breach principle. There's not much of the, the breach principle that's going to be on the test. Okay, so I um, pretty much want to focus on the first two pages of that, 103 and 104, for the most part. Not get caught up into right now the diagram. That's for something else. We'll deal with that, something else. The crystal center, 
definitely understand that. Now, next week, we're going to go over um, chapter 16 to chapter 23. We're going to go through it quickly because you've already read it. And we're going to be prepared for the test for the following week. I look forward to hearing from those of you that have questions, comments, or statements uh, during this week. Okay? Okay, so let us, uh, we're going to dismiss and you will have your video within within the hour. Within yeah, well, yeah, within the hour. Father, right now we thank you, God, for this opportunity to come with the people of God into your word. And God, as we study to show ourselves approved, right, divine and with the truth. God, we thank you for what our ears have heard, our hearts have felt. We thank you for the lessons learned. And God, we ask that you will bless those, dear God, as we continue, dear God, to show ourselves approved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. And we'll talk to you. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Stay safe. Good night. Stay safe, yes. Stay, stay, stay prayerful.